I've made the point before that a place can tell more than one story, different points in time of what occurred to it. And here on the Zion Gate, it's a really, really good place to look. So of the eight gates of the Jerusalem, this is one, leading into the old city that is, this is one in which you can see the bullet holes which were made in 1948 as on the 19th of May an armed force tried to join civilians who were inside the old city with uh, trying to re maintain the Jewish quarter um, in the battles with the Jordanian forces. These walls, however, as you can imagine, were not built that same year and not even close. They're 16th century walls built by Suleiman the Magnificent, Ottoman walls, which were made as fortifications. So as you walk through them, notice a number of things in the gate. It's going to be the same in some of the other gates that you can encounter in the old city. For example, the fact that you can't run through them very fast because you're going to hit a wall. They're built at an angle. It looks a bit like an elbow in order to make any forces that are trying to go in to get them slow down and to have less people going through the wall than could otherwise lead through it. And you can see on either side of the wall the slants which were used not only for arrows but also for sending out spears that could halt any vehicles which had wheels and were trying to get close to the wall. The same tactics which were meant to slow people down as they're trying to attack the walls in the 16th century were the tactics which made it difficult to conquer at any other point in time. But I want to go a little further back, before 1948, before the Ottomans in the 16th century, and to the origin of the Arab name of this um, gate, and they call it the Gate of David. And that's because it's the one that's leading out to Mount Zion, where we're immediately going to go, and to a place associated by Islam, Judaism and Christianity with the burial place of David. We were in a really condensed building on Mount Zion which has really seen a thing or two. This is a monument which tells so many points of time. We're here in a cloister which was built roughly in the 14th century but it becomes a Khan in the 16th century meaning a place for people to stay overnight. Over there, where all the people are and all the voices are, that's the place attributed to the tomb of King David, which is why people who are Christian, Muslims, Jews, come to see the place. They arrive and they say Psalms, the book attributed to King David. The building has loads of more history, so I want to walk out and take you upwards. Up we go. This is a corner which not only overlooks the Mount of Olives, which is the place where most eschatological ideas about Jerusalem are focused, but it's also peeking out towards Temple Mount. And in the 19 years, oh, see, I can't breathe properly. I need to go to the gym. But in the 19 years, between 1948 and 1967, all that was Jordan. Anything east of here was Jordan. So people would come out on this um, rooftop and look out and try to organize their thoughts and think about Jerusalem.